This is James White with Freak Interviews, bringing you ASEAN TV product reviews, gadget reviews, and more. Now, today I've got the Hexclad hybrid pan. It's stainless steel and nonstick. This is a $130 pan. I even picked up the lid for another 50 bucks. Could it be worth the cost? Let's find out in today's video. All right, here it is. I've got a lot of requests for this one over the last year, so I finally just broke down and picked it up. Let's check it out and unbox it. Oh, there it is. It's a very attractive pan. If pans can be attractive, it is attractive. The first thing you're supposed to do is wash it with warm soapy water and then season it. I will also say my first impression is it's actually pretty heavy, heavier than the other 12 inch pans I have. I like the way it looks. Let's see how it cooks. This pan is supposed to be PFOA free, oven safe to 500, metal utensil safe, dishwasher safe, hybrid technology. Scratch resistant, stay cool metal handles, tri-ply constructions, lifetime, lifetime warranty, non-stick inside and outside. None of that means anything if it doesn't perform right though, right? Now the instructional video I saw to season it was to put it on between medium and low heat and to add a little bit of vegetable oil. He says to swirl it around for a couple minutes and then it should be good to go. First thing I wanted to do when I was testing it out, really just to, just to try it out for myself, was do a quick fried egg and here's how that went. It really does look nice. Does it perform as well as it looks? Let's find out. Now in the Hexclad video for making eggs, they show they spray a little bit of cooking spray on there, which I'm going to do. All right, well, this definitely is not sticking. Is that the pan or the oil the why it's not sticking though? Hmm. I mean, it's doing pretty well. It, I don't know if it's the pan or the oil that made it not stick. but it is moving around nicely in there. So, you know, first test, I'm, I, I guess I'll give it a passing grade. We got a long way to go though. What do you guys think? Is this a valid test when there's oil in there? That's how they say to cook them. I don't know. See what's next. That test didn't really show much because I ended up using oil in there anyway. So I wanted to try some shrimp, which do tend to stick to pans. I tried my granite rock and the hex clad and uh, the results are pretty good. Check it out. We've got 12 shrimp in here, 12 shrimp in here. Now normally you'd put something in the pan, but I'm testing the nonstick surface. So we're going in commando style shrimp right in the pan. For hex clad, I'm only using metal utensils. For granite rock, I'm using the clongs that have the silicone on the ends. So let's get started. And we're off. Let's see how these do. Oh, well, came right off. Whoa. All right, Hexclad, bringing your A game for the shrimp. An impressive showing by Hexclad. Now over here, the granite rock, which I've done shrimp in here before. And once again, not sticking. I feel like the Hexclad may have cooked a little bit more quickly than the granite rock as far as the shrimp goes. These don't seem quite as done as those do. I put them in at the exact same time. In fact, I put these in a couple seconds earlier. When I was heating them up, I did use my digital thermometer to make sure the pan temperature was about the same. So I don't think that this one was hotter. I just think that it's maybe just cooking more efficiently. I don't know. Now my next question is, can it swirl around without being dislodged? Maybe. It's probably not ideal, but how about granite rock? About the same, maybe a little better. I think the nonstick surface is a little better on granite rock, AKA granite stone than it is on hex clad. I feel so wrong doing that. Well, they both did pretty well with the shrimp, so uh, that's good. I think that the hex clad cooked a little bit faster and the granite rock has a little better nonstick surface. That's my initial observation, but we got a long way to go. I will say that the handle for the hex clad feels cooler than the handle for the granite rock. It's still not hot, but it does seem like the handle is cooler. I will look forward to seeing how well that cleans up. First up, granite rock. All right, the elapsed time on the granite rock, under a minute. Very quick, came right off. All right, Hexclad is next. They say you can actually use this abrasive side of the sponge if you want. We'll have to see if that works or not. All right, that took about the same amount of time as the granite rock, so I think we're kind of on even keel here. So let's try some more tests and see how this pan works. By the way, I should mention that I'm not sponsored to do this video. I paid full price for it. It was $130 for the pan and $50 for the lid. 
And I'm not a sponsor for Granite Rock either, even though I like that pan. That was only 30 bucks. I paid full price for that one too. All right, a popular demonstration is making a quesadilla. I'm gonna use the hex clad with the granite rock side by side to see how it compares. Now in the demonstration, he puts cheese in the pan, lets it melt, puts a tortilla shell on top, wipes it around, folds it over, and cuts it in the pan. I'm not gonna cut the granite rock in the pan, but I'm gonna do everything else. This should not take long at all. Oh, Bailey smells the food. I, I'm sorry, Bailey, you can't have quesadillas. Looks like the granite rock's a little bit more melted than the hex clad, so we'll do that one first. He pushed it on there. He wiped it around. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's something left on there. And he put it over there. And he folded it like that. Now for the hex clad. I mean, I guess, I don't know, the result's the same? There's still a little bit of cheese left in there. Oh look, I just picked up the uh, granite rock and it, the extra cheese came off. The hex clad, the extra cheese kind of coming off. I'm gonna cut this with my Star, Star Trek pizza cutter. <laughs> going through turbulence. All right, let's see if it actually scratches the surface. If it does, I'm gonna be upset because I spent all so much money on this thing. They did say you can use metal utensils in here. Well, I don't see any scratches. Do I see any scratches? I don't think I see any scratches. I don't think I see any scratches. It looks pretty good. I right, hear the pans after taking the quesadillas out. A little bit of cheese in the bottom of the hex clad. A little bit of cheese in the bottom of the granite rock. I'm gonna let them cool off and see which one wipes out easier. Well, just wiping it with a paper towel seems like it's not getting all of it out. Well, I'm gonna have to definitely clean that in the sink. How about this one? I don't feel like I left as much behind on the granite rock. See right there? Can't get that out. Hmm. They say you can use metal utensils. Oh, I feel so wrong. I feel so wrong. This one, I'm not sure I'm supposed to use metal utensils, so I'm not going to. Not that I need to, because it's pretty much cleaned up with just a paper towel. So I think the cheese melting test was kind of a tie, but as far as the Wiping it out with a paper towel goes for the pre-cleanup. I think granite rock has the slight edge. And by the way, looking more closely, I don't see any uh, cut marks when I cut that tortilla in here, so that's a good thing. So far, so good. A lot of people on my social media, when I asked them what I should test in here, said steak. So I wanted to get a thin steak because thicker steaks require you put it in the oven, and I didn't want to have any other variables. So I just wanted a thin steak, see how it's seared, and it did pretty good. Here's how it went. The pan's been on for about five minutes. It's on medium high heat. I put a minimal amount of oil. It's just starting to smoke, so we're adding the steak right now. There we go. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to hear. Sorry, Bailey. No steak for you. All right, a couple minutes of this and we'll flip it. I did let the steak sit out so it's room temperature. I uh, patted it dry, so I think that we should be uh, in shape for a nice steak here. All right, this is a pretty thin steak, so I'm gonna flip it. All right, well, it definitely didn't stick. All right. That was uh, three minutes on each side. Let that rest and cut into it and see how it turned out. And we'll see how easy that is to clean up as well. It's a pretty thin steak, a little more medium than I wanted, but I'm more interested in how the searing and the cooking went. Probably back the time off a little bit for the next one. But the important thing is that it did cook it pretty quickly, thoroughly. And over here, uh, the searing did seem to go uh, about as I hoped. If it had been a thicker steak, it probably would have been the perfect time. Um, let me let this cool off, clean it off, and then try the next thing. So it was at this point after the steak that I noticed that discoloration was starting to form around, especially around the edges of the pan. And that's something they said would happen. And they said that you could clean that up with steel wool. So I'll do that a little bit later on. I didn't want to mess the pan up before I was done, but I did notice after the steak, I was starting to get discoloration mostly around the edges. So 
that's uh, that's something that's a little disappointing. I, I know I kind of expected it, but I was still disappointed anyways. Now for my next test, I did just some chicken breast. I wanted to compare the granite rock pan and the hex clad. This time I didn't use any oil or butter, which you would do if you're cooking chicken in a pan, but I wanted to test out the nonstick surface so to see how well they flipped. And uh, they actually did pretty well. Check it out. All right, another comparison here. We got the granite rock and the hex clad. The reason I keep using my granite rock is because I haven't found a pan better than that yet. So. I want to see if this expensive X clad can beat it. So far, I'm not so sure yet. I'm gonna do some chicken breast, commando style, no oil or butter to see how the nonstick works, see how it cooks. And uh, I got them both on medium heat. Let's go right now. All right, let's see how well these do. Granite rock, hex clad, pan versus pan. All right, let me try flipping these things and see how they do. First up, hex clad. Not too bad, really. Next up, granite rock. Also not bad. I think the hex clad is hanging with the granite rock in, in most of these tests. The only thing I'm worried about is that discoloration over there, which I'm gonna address that in a few minutes here. Now, obviously, like I said, I would normally have some sort of oil or butter in there. I wanted to see how well it did with the nonstick and it's doing pretty well, just like the granite rock. And you can supposedly do this, which I wouldn't do over there. All right, let's see how these look here. All right. I think the results are pretty close. I think the mess is pretty close. Let these cool off and clean them up. I've never had much of a problem cleaning the, the granite rock. This one I'm still kind of on the fence about, but we'll see. First up, granite rock. I'm gonna use my dream farm to scrape it with. That's coming right off. Oh, easy. What was that, about 30 seconds? And this pan is over a year old, by the way, and gets used multiple times a week. I'm gonna do the same thing with the hex clad. Oh, it's coming right out. Coming right out, hex, cl hex clad is hanging. I wanna say the hex clad may have even been a couple of seconds faster. We have, we definitely have ourselves a competition here, people. We've got two more tests for the hex clad pan, and these are more about durability tests than anything. First up, I'm gonna try myself a Brillo pad and a silicone scrubber, not only to see how the service holds up, but also if I can get those marks out. But before that, that's right, it's the mixer test. Now their YouTube channel has two videos with mixers in the thumbnails. They say that their pan can handle mixers as well as steel wool and Brillo pads. That's next. First thing I wanna do is see how this pan holds up with just a mixer, nothing in there. See if maybe that's just a parlor trick they're doing. Let's see. Well, I'm not pressing very hard and I don't see anything. Ooh, that didn't sound good. All right, I'm gonna put some eggs in here and see how it actually does. All right, I've got two eggs. They're going right in the pan. I'm gonna mix them in there. It just feels wrong. But let's see how wrong it really is. Oh. All right, we're mixing. This doesn't seem like very efficient anyways. I don't think I would normally do this. I'm not really sure that's the most efficient way to make eggs in there. There really isn't a recipe guide for how to scramble eggs in the pan. So I, that may have not been the best way to do it. But that's irrelevant. It's not the egg cooking that matters. It's the pan, how it holds up to that, I think. I'm gonna let this cool off and then I'm gonna closely inspect the pan to see how it held up, especially the edges, because it sounded like it was kind of making some nasty noises over there, like this. See, that doesn't sound good. I'm just gonna keep doing it right there. I'll come back in a minute and see how it looks. 
I'm going to take a very close look at this pan after using the mixer on it. I don't see any marks. I'm a little bit impressed. This is the area that I was focusing on toward the end. Nothing. What I do see is you can look at discoloration though. That is the problem. And that's something that a lot of commenters have talked about is the discoloration. So my next step, even though it passed the mixer test, we're going to try to get that off with the Brillo pad test. And that's my final test. I'm impressed at how well I handled the mixer though. I got to give them credit for that. Here we go. I see a lot of discoloration all around here. Oh, that. <laughs> Every tissue in my body is telling me not to do that, but I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. That's right. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Okay. You know what? It still looks discolored. This is probably a step down from that. Let me try it anyways. This is like the worst part right there. Ah, I'm scrubbing. Ah go back to this scrubbing as hard as I can I did get the discoloration off right there it was a lot of work and that was only a little section that I was able to get it off as hard as I scrub the rest of the pan it barely made a dent so I'm gonna have to scrub that hard all around the edges do I really want to do that do you really want to, would you do that oh it's there's a lot of discoloration over here too man I've only used this a, not even a week I got good news and bad news. The good news is that it is possible to get the discoloration off. The bad news is that you're gonna look like Popeye with your forearms after all the scrubbing you have to do to do that. All right, let's go wrap this thing up now. So in the end, I'm a little bit on the fence about the hex clad. I think that performance wise, it really performed about as well as the Granite Rock and the Granite Rock is the best pan I've ever reviewed. So in that case, it kind of hangs with it, but there's two issues with this that I don't like. Number one is the price, 130 bucks, 30 bucks, almost the same performance between the two of them. It's kind of hard to justify. And yes, this has been used for over a year, so it's actually a little bit more proven than the hex clad is. The other thing is the discoloration of the hex clad. I don't think that really affects uh, the cooking of it. It just, it's more of an aesthetic. But if you don't like it, it really takes a lot of scrubbing to get rid of it all. I had to use some significant elbow grease to scrub the discoloration off just one little section. I didn't want to take the time to do all of it. And that's only after a few uses. I mean, that's something that's going to be a regular thing for you if you have one of these pans. I think that if you bought one and the discoloration isn't a problem for you, you'll probably be happy with it. If it was me and I was looking to invest in a new pan, I'd probably buy something a little less expensive that performs just as well. That's my opinion and your mileage will certainly vary. Have you used the Hexclad pans? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Check out my social profiles for progress pictures and videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Frequent Reviews.